bigger. My dad in Australia gets a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. You coming out? One hell of a fucking story. So stay tuned. This is Coop and Cassius for IFL TV, a proudly sponsored by Everlast. We've got to timestamp this because this is like a changing period of time at the moment. 9.37, Wednesday the 7th of September. And I actually did an interview this morning at 6.30am. I know you did. I'm sorry about that. It was via stage front. It was a commercial interview. It was not my chosen outlet, although I like Marco Villegas and Fight Hub. But it was 6.30 this morning. So... You've been chasing, you know the thing with you, yeah? No, I'll you're tell you the thing with you. No. You're such a little bitch sometimes, because you're like, we're mates, yeah, but obviously, I always give you first dibs, right? And you're like, you phone me, and I know what you want, right? But this is actually, before all this Fury stuff, you're like, can I come in and do a bit? Can I come in and do a bit? I'm like, oh, anyway, I was going to do it. And then obviously the Fury stuff broke, and you're like, fucking relentless, excuse my language. Good plug for the book, by the way. Yeah, good book as well, Relentless. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, number one bestseller on the, the Times, yeah, wherever it is. <laughs> They're all sold, so I haven't even got any copies in the office. Um, and then you're like, then the texts start coming through. Mate, mate, have we fallen what? out, mate? Mate, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Let me just get this up here, right? This, this, is, this is a typical you, right? Trying to, like, almost make me feel bad. Hold on. Um... Let Gold. Me, let me come tomorrow, Edward. Have I upset you or something, Hearn? You around today with the wires, right? Um, oh, I know, I know I'm second fiddle now, bro. Um, is it possible to get 15 minutes? Any good news for me? Still waiting outside your office for that interview, mate. Edward, Edward, shall I just turn up, mate? Let me know what time, bruv. What time tomorrow, Ed? Yo... Tuesday morning any good? Are you not going to Abu Dhabi on Tuesday? Can we come in tomorrow, Ed? When can we do something? Can we do something? Oh, mate. Are you going yeah. to do something today, Edward? Come on, By the way, can I just say, this, say no. this is over the last sort of few weeks. This isn't... Uh, to be honest with you, all you need to do is go, Cook, listen, I'm busy, I ain't about, we'll speak whenever, but you don't do that because... But I've learnt that you actually don't do this with a lot of people as well. Um, listen... I don't want to sound like I'm the most in-demand man on the planet, but I receive, on average, probably a dozen WhatsApps every minute. Like, I, I'm really sorry to people I don't get back to. And it's even like my mates. Like, my mates, one, probably my best mate, said to me the other day, you're a rude bastard, you are. You don't apply to... I'm like, go into the WhatsApp group with the lads. It's like 130 messages talking about football, talking about dream teams. But I, I don't get involved in stuff. I don't have time. I, I live a really weird, boring life that is just basically business. I'm busy. <laughs> so, um, if I don't be relentless in this situation, yeah, I do no, feel then no, I'm not going to get it but, because but, I know. But when, I, when I've swerved four calls, don't then call another three or four times because it, at that point, I know I've got to do something with I don't you. Know about four calls, I think two in a day. No, no, no. no two in a day. No. Two in a day. Go on, have a look yesterday. Two. Yeah, two yesterday. Yeah. That was yesterday. Last night, two missed calls. Eight, eight twenty-two, eight forty-six. Not a lot's going to change in twenty-four minutes, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to start thinking like Coogan missed calls. Coogan missed. Calls. I mean, it's like it's never ending, mate. Coog. Oh, another one. Another one there, mate. It's. it's but we're here. It worked. So, me driving you mad on the WhatsApps. Me, okay, oh, no. where are you? Okay, bruv. <laughs> where are you? Right, what the fuck's going on? What's going on? Have you re you've received an offer? Because I've read yeah. that somewhere, go on. Um, look, I think, firstly, look, you know, we, I've never really had a relationship with Queensbury or the Warrens, never spoke to Frank Warren in my life other than... Um, I think on the phone maybe once, but George Warren reached out to me the other day, who I've spoke to a couple of times, and obviously Francis I know as well, and said, what do you think? And you know, I saw the, the call out, if you want to call it that, from Tyson Fury the other day. I took it with a complete pinch of salt because two weeks ago he retired. 
Um, ten days ago, he wanted to fight Derek Chisora in December. Um, then he wanted to fight Alexander Usyk. Then he wanted half a billion or he'll never fight again. And then he wanted to fight Anthony Joshua. So I don't really trust or believe anything he says, but of course you have to take it seriously if it is serious and we have to explore whether it is or not. So George Warren reached out to me. He said, what do you think? Now the plan for us was, you know, the big thing over the last couple of weeks is would AJ be ready for middle of December, which ultimately is December 17th was his date he was going to fight. And over the last couple of days, he believes, the team believes he'd be ready for that date. So we've been working towards that fight. So the first thing I did was I reached out to AJ and Freddie Cunningham and 258 and said, look, George Warren's been on, what do you think? And he said, of course, you know, we want that fight. Don't forget, we signed for that fight a year ago and that fight was stopped because of the Wilder arbitration, nothing to do from our side. And funnily enough, we offered Tyson Fury to fight when he wasn't champion at 60-40 and he turned it down and he asked for 50-50, but irrelevant. Um, I spoke to AJ and he said, look, I don't believe he's for real, but yeah, look, I'd, I'll take the fight, obviously, see what the offer is. So I said to George Warren, make me an offer. Come back, let me know. So they came back um, yesterday and me and George were just... We kind of had an agreement that we weren't really going to talk about it, but obviously Fury came out and basically let the world know the offer, and now you're here. So it's not a case of going backwards and forwards and slagging people off, because the, the conversations have been quite productive. 60-40 was the offer, as Tyson said. They want a rematch clause. Um, and they asked for a date at the beginning of November, which obviously, I don't know whether that was like a wind-up or whatever, but... We just went back this morning and said, and I spoke to AJ about that offer. We think, I think particularly, he deserves more than 40%, but he's happy. And I don't make the decisions he does. So I went back this morning and said, we accept 60-40. Um, we want that reversed in a rematch, rightfully so, because you're the champion here, you want the biggest split, etc., which I think is fair. And we, we want to do the fight in December. Now, interestingly, they have... December 17, Queensbury held at Millennium Stadium. So that's perfect. That's perfect for us. That was the day I think he was going to fight Derek Chisora. So there are a lot to discuss around, you know, AJ has an exclusive global deal with DAZN, but already me and George have been talking about ways to share that with BT, etc. Um, so in essence, we accept the offer of 64. And we confirmed that this morning. Lots of conversations to had. I don't know whether this is a play to let this break down and then fight someone well under par in November, December and say, well, I tried to make the AJ fight. Or I don't know whether this is to try and get the Usyk fight agreed for a load more money because there's a lot of people that if they wanted to stage that fight in the spring, wouldn't want to see him fight AJ in December because it might slow down that undisputed fight. Or maybe he just wants to fight. So we're going through all those, those processes. It's difficult because obviously all the media, everybody get, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? All I can tell you at the moment is we accept 64. So that's great news for everybody. And hopefully we can have those conversations. I've got nothing negative to say about Queensbury, George, Tyson. If they genuinely want the fight, we're here ready to try and make the fight. It's not a fight I expected to happen in December. And... Our plan after the Usyk fight was to see AJ fight in December, fight in March, and then go into a big, a big fight like a Fury or a Wilder or a Dillian White. But if it's a shot at the world heavyweight title and it's a fight that he's always wanted, he'll do it. So you said that you think, and you and AJ think, that you're worth more than 40%, but do you, do you perceive a 60-40 a split to be a fair offer? It's the same offer that we made Tyson Fury previously, when AJ was champion. So he turned that down, by the way. He said, I'm not fighting AJ for 60-40. We're not saying that, we're saying yes. So I don't know whether they're trying to call our bluff. Or, I mean, I'm very cynical about Tyson Fury in general because of the chronological statements that he's made recently. But if they are calling the bluff, we, we accept. So let's try and get it made.
And I don't want to get people too excited because I am I have my doubts. But what I can tell you is AJ's ready to fight him in December. The the terms, the, the offer of that fight we're saying is fine. So let's see if we can iron out the other bits and see where we get to. Has um the rematch split being determined? No, they it was it was offered at 50-50. Um, so, again, we think that if you're saying you're the champion, you should get 60-40. We believe that when AJ is champion, that split should be reversed. Very straightforward in agreements. It's not industry norm, but it's pretty much industry norm. So, uh, we don't see that as an issue. They want the rematch clause. We're not moaning about the rematch clause. He's the champion. We've, we've had rematch clauses in our agreement when AJ's been champion, so um, we don't have a problem with the rematch when AJ wins. You, you've you not been involved in a, a split pay-per-view before, have you? No. No. Uh, no, I have been involved in a deal with Klitschko against AJ, where in America it was on both Showtime and HBO, which was quite groundbreaking. But not in the UK, obviously. No. So, in terms of that, it would be between... If it is to be a split pay per view, it would be between the zone pay per view and BT. Right. And obviously, I don't, think, I don't think either party would have an issue. Honestly, I think you know those those two businesses know each other. I believe so. It's, it, I mean, you know, Frank Warren was right yesterday. It does two million buys plus, massive. I mean, this fight is so much bigger than Usyk Fury. So much bigger than Usyk Fury. It's mad, isn't it? You know, AJ's worked his whole career to try and become undisputed and boxed all the mandatories, paid all the sanction fees, and then all of a sudden, the fight is still there without, I say any belts, just the WBC belt. But that's not even relevant. Like, it's just the fight. And I've always said for so long, Fury AJ will always be there. But at the moment, it's there for the World Heavyweight title. It's not an ideal month or time for AJ probably to take this fight. He's coming off two defeats. But he's the boss and he says, I want to fight Fury. And if it means fighting him next to get my chance to fight Fury, I'll do it in December. No problem. And you you know, you're not going to see him coming out giving interviews. That's why I wanted to send that that tweet out or that post. I'm ready to fight you in December. No problem. But do we believe you? And at the moment everything that I'm seeing through the process is giving me more confidence that actually they, they would like this fight to happen. So we're here to try and make it. Could we have seen a situation at any point, even prior to this or even now, where an offer came from your end to make this fight happen? I know it's coming from them. What, for December? For, for December to fight Tyson no, Fury. we haven't. Look, we made an offer for Tyson Fury to fight him when he wasn't champion. We made an offer to fight him when, for the undisputed, um, which was signed. And then unfortunately they had to pull out because of the Wilder arbitration. And we, we, we never thought, I mean, firstly, I didn't think, I mean, look, Fury was saying he was retired, firstly. So then he's gonna fight Usyk. So we never really thought that AJ had an option to fight Tyson Fury. And, you know, from my point of view, AJ should come back with two fights now get two solid wins with a new team, and then go and have a big fight. But as you've seen from his resume, he's not really about that. He, the offer was laid down, and he had a decision to make, whether to say, no, I don't want to fight Tyson Fury, or yes, I do. And the answer was, yes, I do. And I'll do it in December. He's been away. You know, He had a long training camp. He had a few niggles in the fight. His eye was a little bit bashed up, but he'd probably be okay to start sparring in five, six weeks, four, five weeks, once he's had his rest, and December he'll be ready. Um, it's unexpected. It probably isn't ideal in terms of the timing and everything, but in his head, he can beat him, and he wants to do it. Has it been discussed, I know you're talking about the, the save date at the Principality Stadium, but has it been discussed the possibility of this fight taking place anywhere outside of the UK? Not at the moment, no. I mean, we've not even really gotten to venues, but... I just think that time frame, the way that these events work, particularly in the Middle East, which is really the region that would generate significantly more money for this fight than the UK, the time frame's too short. You know, December, you're talking about, what, 11, uh, sorry, 12 or 13 weeks. 
So the fight has to take place in the UK and should do, really. I mean, I think that's great for everybody. They're leaving a lot of money on the table by doing it in the UK, but AJ's leaving money on the table by not negotiating. You know, we're, we're accepting their first offer. It's not like we're going back and saying we want 45% or we want 50%. He's just saying almost like, look, rather than give Tyson Fury a reason to not take the fight, just accept it, you know? So I think they were quite shocked when we came back this morning and said, we accept 64, no problem. So now we have to deal with the other stuff. Like I said, I don't know why he wanted to put the offer in for early November. That's, you know, and I spoke to George Warren and he, he said about November and I said, look, AJ's just coming off a fight. He's had a long camp. He, he'll be fine for December. So it doesn't, November, December, so it was completely irrelevant in the fighter's career. Eddie, because obviously Joshua's coming over the last year off the back of those two losses, and I know your initial plan would have been for him to have had, say, a top 10 or 12 opponent in um, December. That's the ideal situation. So from your point of view, to put Joshua off the back of those two losses in with Tyson Fury in his next fight, you must be kind of sceptical about doing that in terms of that, or is it a case of this opportunity coming up now and we, you have to take it if it's there? I think the one thing that's plagued AJ is activity, but he is coming off a fight two weeks ago, so at least it's not a long wait between the next fight. In an ideal world, as I've said in this interview, I would like him to get a couple of fights, work with the new trainers, keep improving, get the confidence back and go and you know, tear it, tear it up against in a big fight next summer. But probably that Fury fight may never present itself. He could actually retire. He could lose to Usyk. He could do all these other things. So it's really on AJ and the training team. They feel like they're comfortable fighting Tyson Fury now. I'm comfortable with him fighting Tyson. I'm not sitting here going, oh, it's such a dangerous fight or I don't like this. It's a very tricky fight. Tyson's very good. But we like our chances. And AJ's prepared to roll the dice. And like I said, the, the gauntlet was laid down. The bluff was made, maybe or maybe not. And we're up for it. So let's do it. I don't see really any sort of unsolvable or, or immovable objects that if they really want it, should stop this fight. Um, but let's not get too excited at the moment. All we're doing, and I don't want to talk too much about it, even though I'm in a half an hour interview with you, we're happy to continue those conversations with George Warren, and I'm responding to Tyson Fury's uh, posting to say, offer has been made, no excuse, blah, blah, and we're saying, we accept that offer. So let's deal with the other points and hopefully get it over the line. Because when, when, the, when Tyson put that first video out, uh, the response from kind of a lot of the bo boxing public was to have a lot of doubts about whether this fight had happened. I know there's a few posts going out saying it's on and all this kind of stuff. But I think as boxing fans, we can kind of look at this with a pinch of salt until, because it's not the case if we've been there before, it was a different situation, as you said. But it, are we right to get excited about it? It does seem like things have moved on yeah, since we, even his post. We should always get excited. I mean, look, they may, they're probably looking at AJ right now and going, what an ideal time to fight him. Two defeats. Cool, we saw him have a little bit of a meltdown in the ring. This is a great time to fight Anthony Joshua. So I get that. Um, I, I, I can't tell you. I, I, I don't think... Because we've been let down in the past, and I'm not blaming all Fury for that, I wouldn't get too excited, but we'll keep you posted. And I, all I can tell you at the moment, I, mean, I guess you should get excited that we've accepted their offer for this fight. Like, that's where we get to. So there's a lot of other areas of the deal that has to be worked out, and we talked about the TV and stuff like that, but I don't see... I think they're all solvable. The, the, probably the biggest thing that's against us is time. That's why... I, Certainly a beginning of November fight, I mean, firstly for AJ's prep and secondly for all the other things that have to be agreed is impossible. But December, as, as he was supposed to fight Chisora on that date, I think, uh, I think there's a chance. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know enough about these people to tell you how much of a chance there might be. But Tyson is always unpredictable and maybe 
maybe he wants to do it. And if he does, we'll, we'll do everything we can to try and make it. So, as a, a second option, shall we say, for this, um, obviously speaking to Dillian White from the weekend, who was at the, the Sky Show, um, he said that he would be open to a fight with, um, with Anthony Joshua this de- December. I know you've gone on record in saying that that is not likely to happen for December with Dillian White. So if it was likely to happen or could happen with Tyson Fury, why wasn't Dillian White kind of put into a mix of opponents potentially for Joshua outside Fury? Because we've been talking to Dillian White about the plan and the plan for Dillian White is to fight in November. Um, AJ will fight in December and subject to the Fury fight or whatever happens, we will go and make that fight in a stadium in spring, summer of 2023. Everyone's on the same page with that. AJ wants to fight Dillian White. Dillian White wants to fight AJ. It's a massive fight. It's a stadium fight. Um, it's not that if you if you're considering Tyson Fury, why wouldn't you consider Dillian White? We would, but that wasn't really the plan. The plan was after the Usyk fight, you know, top 15 guy, maybe one more, and then a big stadium fight next summer. Um, if all of a sudden, you know, AJ came on to me or Dillian came on to me and said, let's make the AJ fight now then I'd talk to him, but we hadn't, we've never had that discussion. And by the way, Dillian White's coming off a knockout defeat. And AJ's coming off a defeat. So I know you guys just want to see fighters just get chucked in, chucked in. But at the same time, Dillian has been so inactive and so has AJ. I mean, but at least AJ just boxed two weeks ago. With Dillian White, he boxed in April, whatever it was. And before that, he hadn't boxed for 13 months. So, in my opinion, he needs that fight to come back to um, because they're both at points in their career where they, they, sh- they don't really want many more defeats, you know? I know they're fighting at elite level, but still, you've got to be ready, prepared, and especially if you've got a new training team and stuff like that, you need time to gel with a new training team. That was one of the problems going into the Usyk fight, and I think Josh did really well in that fight, considering. But I would like to see him have those couple of fights with a new training team and then be 100% ready for challenges. But if the Fury fight's there, if the shot at the belt's there, he will do it. How quickly do you want to resolve this, as in find out if there we're, is, we're if this planning, can go any further or not? We, we are planning AJ to fight in December, and we're, we're doing all the work around venues, whoever that may be. Where, where are you planning oh, outside the Fury fight? In the UK, yeah. 100%. And, and I want to take AJ and box him, you know, I want to see him fight in America. I want to see him fight in China. I want to see him fight in Australia. Um, but I, f- I feel like the fight in December should be in the UK. Now, there is a problem with venues because one of the reasons I know about Queensbury having December 17th booked at Millennium Stadium is because we tried to get it. Um, so there isn't a lot of options, but at the moment, I am planning AJ's return for December We're on the basis that it's not Tyson Fury. Because what I'm not prepared to do is go through that whole process and be left holding your dick and saying, oh, blimey, I haven't got a venue now, I haven't got an opponent, because Tyson Fury said on Instagram he 100% wanted it. I can't believe it. What's happened here? So, yeah, we, I'm going through the process to lock in his December fight. If it is Tyson, fantastic. Obviously, that will take precedence. What is the next step, as far as you're concerned, in your next communication so, regarding this with George Warren so or whoever? We went back to them with a reply to their email and, and we'll wait to hear back from them. Um, our requests were pretty straightforward, really. Um, we'll see what he comes back with and then we'll meet, probably. I would say maybe tomorrow, Friday, and see where we get to. It's interesting how Tyson's message the other day, which was probably the most kind of very calm and diplomatic offer that he put on his Instagram that kind of triggered all this, like that approach seemed to be kind of, even though Joshua put that thing out saying that I'm not going to do online discussions, etc. but it's even brought it to this stage that that approach, rather than ranting and raving or, yeah, or doing things a different we way. We never had an approach for the fight, personally. It was done to the world, which is always concerning. Like normally you'd pick up the phone and just say, listen, just putting it out there, are you interested in the, the Fury fight? We had to watch that on Instagram, which was all a bit weird, and that's why... But then, obviously, Queensbury have to do their job. The the fighters are the bosses. So when Tyson Fury says, look, I'll try and make AJ fight, 
They've got to try and do that. When AJ says to me, I accept that offer, try and make the fight, it's my job to try and make it happen. Um, it's very unconventional, Tyson, because normally you just phone up a promoter and say, do you want to make this fight? But again, one week it's this, one week it's that. You just don't know what's going to happen the next day with him. He might decide to retire again tonight or come up with a reason why December is such a bad idea over November. Like Anything could happen. I know this isn't really a, probably a question for you, but I'll ask you anyway. So let's say, for example, that this fight does get made for December between AJ and, and Fury. Well, where does this whole situation leave Alexander Usyk in your position? I think, look, they had AJ and Usyk trained for a long time for that fight, OK? It was a good, solid 12-round fight. Fighters don't go back into camp after a fight like that in two or three weeks. So Alexander Usyk has probably got a few niggles. He's obviously had a very tough time personally with Ukraine and, and that situation. And he's saying, I'm not going back in. You have to go back into camp. Even AJ fighting December 17, you can only really have three or four weeks off. It's no time after you've done a camp. AJ's camp was actually about 10 months for that fight. But still, the fight itself, the damaged eye, you know, all little bits and pieces. And Usyk said, I just won't be ready for December. Um, but I'll be ready for March or something like that. So he'll just wait. You know, he doesn't, he's just full. He doesn't have to make any decisions. Um, he'll see how this plays out. Like I said, maybe this is just a move to get more money for that fight, push people into confirming the fight. I have no idea, but let's see what plays out. OK, um, did you watch Andy Ruiz and Luis Ortiz? No, but I saw the highlights. Um, good win for Andy Ruiz. Look... As we said before, Andy Ruiz is an elite heavyweight. He may not look like an Adonis in his trunks, but he can really fight. And you know, when AJ fought him the first time, people never gave him enough credit. And when AJ beat him the second time, people didn't give AJ enough credit. Luis Ortiz is a top six or seven heavyweight in the world, and Andy Ruiz just beat him. So Andy Ruiz is an elite heavyweight and will always be in exciting fights. You know, and I think him against Wilder is the fight the PBC will make. And I think what they'll try and do is they'll try and find a way for that to be for the WBC heavyweight world title uh, at some point next year. But we'll see what happens with the Usyk fight. And and, and Wilder's got to beat Hellenius. You said before that you don't think that will happen. You, you, you think that Hellenius will beat Wilder. You've said that to me before. I think... Just here. <laughs> Excuse me. I think that Wilder is the favourite in that fight, but Hellenius, look, Chisora beat Hellenius. Dillian White beat Hellenius at every round. But Hellenius has had a little bit of a good spell, but is it a good spell because he beat Konaki or is it just because Konaki's faded now? I'm just not totally convinced by the all round boxing ability of Deontay Wilder. He can knock anyone out. He has unbelievable power. He's so exciting. He's great for the division. But I just... I think he's well beatable. And if Robert Hellenius can find a way to not get chinned, I think he can win the fight. OK. Um, let's just quickly run through some other stuff. Obviously, this week, uh, we have the, the all-female card on, on Sky Sports. And obviously, you have involvement with... Alicia Baumgartner. Um, huge fight with Michaela Mao. Um, are you going to be there? Yeah, I'll be there. I mean, look, I couldn't believe, you know, Alicia is such a huge success story. You know, to see her... I remember what we paid her to fight Terry Harper. To see her go and make seven figures for a fight like this is... We're proud of being involved in her life just evolving and... We're proud of her as a fighter. She's an outstanding fighter. You saw her in the Terry Harper victory. Michaela Meyer is also a very good fighter. Um, it's, a, it's a really good fight, but we believe I'm going to go and see Alicia shortly. Um, I believe she can win the fight. I'll be there to watch that fight. Um, and I think that's a good fight. Shields Marshall's a good fight as well. And um, fingers crossed that, that Alicia can do the business. Is this something that you would have pushed at some point? To have had an all-female card. About three years ago, I thought, well, it'd be, it'd be really good 
to do an all-female card on International Women's Day. And I went to Katie Taylor with the idea, and I thought she was going to kill me. It was almost like an insult to her that, you know, it was like a gimmick. It was like, we don't want to be female boxing. We want to be integrated into cards or headline cards on our merit, not because we're females. So I don't mind the idea. I think, listen, I thought of it three years ago before I got ridiculed by Katie Taylor, but it's a celebration of women's boxing. And I, I have no problem with that at all. Um, but I, yeah, I, I thought it was a good idea a few years ago and she just didn't like it at all because the aim is for those fights to be there on, the, on merit. And sometimes we, we mustn't kid ourselves that female boxing, I mean, that card on Saturday is a great card. They're not, they haven't opened the top tier at the O2. So, and they'll, you know, whether they've sold 4,000, 5,000, whatever it'll be, there's a lot of work to do still. They're not all Taylor Serrano 19,000 sellouts at Madison Square Garden. That was a one-off fight between two pound-for-pound pound icons. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do. But it's great for women's boxing that, you know, you've got all these females on the card. I just like to see it integrated as more of a normality now rather than, you know, it's female boxing. It's not, it's not female boxing. They're all the same, right? In Nottingham in a couple of weeks, you've got Lee Wood, you've got Terry Harper against Rankin. It's not, ooh, there's a female fight. It's just a great fight. It's a, it's a world championship fight. So, but it's, those two fights are really good fights. And I'm excited to see who is victorious, hopefully, um, Baumgardner. In, a, in our fight, and then in the main event. I've always thought Savannah Marshall would beat Clarissa Shields, but I talk to a lot of knowledgeable people in boxing that say absolutely no chance, but I'm excited. Also, to my understanding, they've sold a lot more than four or 5,000 tickets for this fight. Just what? I'm not sure about that, but the, they've sold a lot more than that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I might, like, I know there's been a lot of, um, competitions and stuff like that but it's hard to sell tickets at the moment it's very tough times but I think they should have done the fight in the North East really um, but it's a really good fight really good fight do you know what sorry I was just thinking about St. Kells there as well when you were talking about Tyson Fury and kind of like the last month of him doing a thing I think like we forgot about a fight between Manuel Char and him thrown mm. in there as well that's probably yeah what will happen if, if this, if this he, fight he will, doesn't he happen come out and say well I tried to make the AJ fight but he didn't want it so I'm fighting Manuel Char Manuel Char's alright you know he's someone I'd consider for AJ in that, in that comeback fight you know like um, but for Fury it's not a comeback fight is it he's just beating Dillian White he doesn't need a comeback fight but listen anything can happen um, ok uh, next week obviously Canelo Golovkin, which has cre crept around very quickly. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming you'll be travelling at some point after the weekend. Yeah, be ready for a huge week next week. I mean, like we just had an unbelievable show in Mexico at the weekend with Estrada. Um, just a brilliant world title fight. Erica Cruz as well. Rocky Hernandez. This card, Triple G, Canelo is outstanding. You know, Jesse Rodriguez. Rosado against Akhmadov, Kieran Conway against Amo Williams, Pacheco, it's, it's such a good night. And I think, I think Golovkin's coming. Like, I think the way he's been trained in Big Bear, the extra weight at 168, which will really help him, I actually think that this fight is a lot, lot more competitive than some people think. Canelo's coming off the defeat, all the pressure's on him. But I'll tell you something now, I'm going to get these two going at it because they cannot stand each other. And I promise you, they are desperate to go in there and knock each other out. And they will not take a backward step. This will be the best fight of the three. And next week in Vegas will be a special night. Like, you have to... Sometimes you've got to slow it down and just go, Wow. What are we doing? I mean, last week I was on the sand dunes of Abu Dhabi announcing Bivol Ramirez, Cordina Rakimov, McCaskill against um, Cameron. And now coming back from Hermosillo, which was a couple of days after that, going to Vegas, 
to promote Canelo Triple G, the trilogy, at T-Mobile. I mean, Brian Rose posted a picture yesterday, I don't know if you saw it, the life of Brian, the new life of Brian, which was me promoting Brian Rose against Joachim Alcine. I was there, mate. At the Winter Garden in Blackpool, and I looked at myself 10 years ago and thought, wow, you've aged a bit, but then thought, how did we get here? How did we get here? And I said the other day on the, the Zone Boxing Show, it's mad to think that when you look at our year this year, you know, and you go back to like Lee Wood against Michael Conlon, AJ against Usyk the other week, Katie Taylor against Serrano selling out Madison Square Garden, Canelo against Bivol, Warrington becoming world champion again, Zerdo Ramirez against Bivol, Canelo against Triple G, Wood against Lara, Eubank against Ben, we just announced Chocolatito against Estrada 3. Like, who the fuck is doing anything like that? But we never really, like, I, I'm not out here to get credit because we ain't gonna get it. But fuck me, dust yourself down and say, who is even close enough to tie our shoelaces? Nobody. They can't lace our boots, mate. Look at what I've just said to you there. Show me who is putting on fights like that. Like, globally as well, we just announced Brisbane, Australia, our first show out there. You know, we got a big card we, we're doing in Japan coming up. Like, it's just, honestly, like, Boatsy Richards, another fight of the year contender. Like, Pulev against Jazora, great fight. Like, it's just unbelievable what we're doing. And next week in Vegas, I'm really going to try and just bowl around the MGM Grand, go down to T-Mobile, I might even go out by that Las Vegas sign and have a little picture and just say to myself, I don't know how you got here and I don't know how you're doing it, but you, my son, are the absolute dog's bollocks. And the team that we have at Matchroom, Frank Smith is an unbelievable operator, right? And he'll be running this boxing soon when I poodle off onto the beach. It's Queensbury there, mate. Hello. It's not Queensbury. Uh, I was hoping for uh, some news. Oh. I don't know if that was a wine belt. I know he's got my direct line, but I just want to. Can you just confirm that Anthony Joshua has accepted Tyson Fury's offer? I'm like. Oh. Anyway, um, I will say one thing. Sorry, just so because you, you said you don't ever get any credit. Your card, your card in Nottingham, and your card, card and your card in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, they are actually pretty decent, to be fair. Yeah, but you say pretty decent. That's also sprinkled by the show in Mexico was unbelievable. You've got Conor Benz fighting Chris Eubank in a couple of weeks, right? Then we've got a show in October 22nd, which we'll announce shortly. October 29th, we're about to announce another UK show. Abu Dhabi, November the 5th. November the 12th is Montana Love headlining in Cleveland. November 26th will be another show, big show for us that we'll announce soon. December 3, Chocolatito against Estrada 3, the trilogy. December 10 will be another show. And December 17 will probably be AJ. Could be AJ against Fury. I'm sorry, right? And I'm really sorry. And I know that some people like to give a stick, but you can't. Because lately, I've been looking around at other shows going, how do we, right? And it's not a criticism of anyone else, but I, I watch other shows sometimes. I turn it on and I go, am I missing something here, right? I'm like, what is this? And all the years, the only pleasing thing that I see now and again is that there are a lot of messages going around going, do you know what? I know Eddie's a bit of a bell end but fuck me his shows are on another level to everybody else's and that that is quite nice to see because that's the truth that is the truth you go to one of these shows right and you sit there and you look around and you experience the night not not on the same level mate and by the way at the moment things are going to get very tough for people you're going to have to be very selective on what you spend your money on spend it with us Value for money, great nights, great production, great buzz, just different levels. If you're going to go to live events right now, choose wisely.
because you're going to some events that I'm seeing thinking, how are you spending money going to that, in all honesty? So we will continue to raise the bar. We will continue to try and give value for money for fight fans. And we're going to keep doing what we're doing globally because honestly, what we're doing is unbelievable. And one day, I'm, I'm sometimes my own biggest critic. And one day I will look back and say, but you've got to be careful that you don't just let life pass you by. So I'm making a conscious effort now to, to just appreciate my greatness. Wow. <laughs> to, to, and next week, I will appreciate my greatness. I will be there at, at, with, with the team, with our amazing team at Matchroom, with Frank, and I'll be in Vegas to promote Canelo against Triple G. And you know what? I will have a little trip to the pool and get half an hour in the sun. And I will wear my Dolce and Cabana pyjamas at the way. And I will look terrible at times. But I will lap it up. I will love it. I will live life. Because life is short, mate. Life can get taken away from you at any moment. Whatever you do, don't sit on that deathbed, lay on that deathbed, or get ready to leave this amazing planet and say, didn't really do it, did I? Edward, just a quick couple of things before you go. Um, 8th of October, Ben Eubank, Eubank Ben. Um, undercard wise. No undercard, just that one fight. Who can, who's going to feature on it, mate? No undercard. Um, there will be a full announcement by ourselves and Wasserman in the next four or five days. Um, some big name fighters from Matchroom, some big name fighters from Wasserman. It's a good card and it'll be an outshot. Is there a good chief support on that card? Yes. It's a good card. And like I said, great talent from both stables. Okay. Um, just finally as well, I don't know if Uma I spoke to about this in Abu Dhabi, but the whole influencer scene at the moment, obviously off the back of the, the Misfits show from the, from the weekend and now Jake Paul's fighting mm. Anderson Silva, etc. Are you just completely out of all this mm. now? And it's just like you're just a spectator, just yeah, I like, observing. I like, I like it. I mean, look, I've done it. I know the numbers on DAZN were huge. And it's great for us because the subscriber numbers on DAZN just keep going through the roof in the UK, which is great. Put Eubank Ben in the picture as well. We're flying. But it's not my cup of tea. And I'm not saying I'll never do it again because otherwise someone will play this interview back. But I think it's got, like... I think people enjoy, I think it's light entertainment. And some of it's not great to watch, like a couple of fights were just like, what is going on here? But it's not, it's not boxing. It's not boxing. You have to differentiate the product. You have professional boxing, and then you have YouTube boxing. You can't call that boxing where some bloke's turning his back and spinning around and running across the, like, but it's entertainment. And as long as it's safe, that's one of my concerns, because you we really do have um, to protect fighters. I mean, you saw some fights that were on that card, and I was, I was worried about peop like some people in that fight. Mind you, I was worried about that bloke, Joe Joyce fall. I mean, that was dangerous. But we have to protect fighters, and my worry about the YouTube stuff is, obviously it isn't British Boxing Board of Control licensed stuff just got to be a little bit careful because if something goes wrong in a fight like that or on a night like that, we'll, people will regret it forever. So, um, yeah, but I like it. like it. Hugely entertaining. KSI, KSI is a really smart guy. You know, I really have a lot of time for him. Um, he's very clever. He's a great self-promoter. And listen, at the end of the day, I think they put on an event that top to bottom provided value for money on the zone and in the arena. And that's what it's about at the end of the day. So we'll do... Decent pay-per-view buyers yeah, apparently on that as well? Globally yeah. as well. America, you know, UK especially, globally. So great for the zone. It's just, it's its own thing. It's its own brand, you know? Um, Jake Paul is more... I wouldn't say Jake, Jake Paul is necessarily... I know he's not fighting a boxer again, but he's more of a... It's more boxing than the YouTube stuff. Yeah. Okay, Eddie Earn, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Much appreciated. Sorry, I'm not actually sorry for bugging you. Do you know that? Because if I didn't, then we wouldn't be sat here now. And the f you know, it's all for the fans, obviously. You're all about the fans.
Well, that's why I'm here, for the fans, obviously. The fans. You've got no fans. Eddie, thank you very much for your time. I know you're busy. I know you ain't really got a lot of time for IFL anymore, but you made it today. So, respect to you, bruv. Respect to you, bruv. And respect to you, bruv. Canelo Triple G3, Vegas, baby, let's go. Yeah, I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. Can you come and help One hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned.